So with that said, uh, let's move on to our next segment. High spots and low shots. Uh, let's see. I think my low shot... You know what? I'm going to say that my low shot's Roman Reigns. Ah, uh, okay. Because you know what? He, he tells Dean Ambrose, like, oh, man, they're stupid. No DQ is totally in our wheelhouse. You know, we work great together. We'll be able to take full advantage. I'm focused. I'm everything. And, you know, even though Dean Ambrose ate the pin in the tag match, I mean, Roman Reigns is the one who really suffers the beating. Because, you know, he, he eats all that from the authority. And then he eats a sister, Abigail, from Bray to really close the show. I mean, that's how the show actually closes. Um, so Roman Reigns, he's not juggling everything right now. Things are falling apart. The seams for him. And we'll just see if he can reel back in his momentum and get back on the path of the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. Because right now, it is not a fun time. So Roman Reigns is my low shot. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, definitely behind you on that. My low shot, and I'm just going to sort of random, really just kind of like throw a dart at a dartboard and just pick someone that lost a match tonight. I think my low shot's got to be Neville. Yeah. Because, I mean, like, yeah, he's got one win over Sheamus, but I don't know. Sheamus, uh, I mean, I love this version of Sheamus, but he's not the most credible right now. Right. So, yeah, that was just a, a bad loss for Neville to take, and I hope, he'll, I'm sure he'll bounce back. He's fairly well protected. I think Triple H is behind him, so I think, I think he'll bounce back. It's just a matter of when and against who, or against whom. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I certainly understand where you're coming from. I do think Neville will bounce back. My only thing is, you know, if Neville's going to take the loss here, and you know I love Randy Orton to death, I'm kind of hoping Randy Orton loses the Battleground if that is the end game of Orton versus Sheamus at Battleground. You know, if Neville can take a loss, Orton can certainly take a loss. And just, you know, keep building up your Mr. Money in the Bank. Um, that said, love that I get to do this for my high spot. My high spot is Cesaro. Oh, wow. Had a phenomenal outing with John Cena tonight. By all accounts, won the matchup because he got attacked while he had Cena in a submission hold. Uh, and, and really, outside of the whole kayfabe context and, and getting, I guess, more in a real-life territory, if you will, I think Cesaro reminded everybody, including myself, just how good he is. And again, like I said, it was the kind of matchup that made me want to put stock back into the idea of a Cesaro versus Brock Lesnar matchup. I've been hearing the rumors that him and... Uh, Fortunately, Tyson were both set up for big singles pushes. You know, again, Tyson with his injury, and I really feel shitty about that. But Cesaro hopefully can still have his, and I'm thinking he will after an outing like this. So Cesaro is my high spot, and it feels so good to say. So, Absolutely. All right. Well, I guess that uh, my high spot is probably Kevin Owens, dude. I mean, he's you brought up Cesaro. i got to bring up Kevin Owens because he's the one that prevented Cesaro from winning tonight. Right. I mean, Kevin Owens, say what you will, but he's great on commentary. He's great on the mic. He's great in the ring. There is, I don't think there's anything that Kevin Owens can do right now. And and that's the beauty of it. Like, I think in that one sentence, you pretty much packaged all the praises I've been singing about Kevin Owens, you know, for a while. The guy's untouchable right now. He, he is like, really a, is. he's like a modern day combination. Like if high, if CM Punk and Brock Lesnar fused together. Yeah. Yeah. You get Kevin Owens. And just that whole tidbit about the fathers wearing the T-shirts. Like, I had the stupidest smile on my face just hearing that. Because it shows, like, not only are his words, you know, powerful, but they're actually creating a legitimate effect. And, um, you know, that is like CM Punk with the whole call for ice cream bars and everything that everybody jokes about now. Um, I love you know, that that's what he's remembered for. Like, he broke the fourth wall. He shot on... Freaking Triple H used his real name, called him Paul Levesque, called himself Bill Brooks on television. But no, we're just going to remember him for his ice cream bars. Exactly. Um, so yeah, great high spot. Couldn't disagree with it. Uh, with that said, let's get on to our next segment, Raw Request. Uh, it's my so Raw funny because I thought you were going to say I couldn't disagree more. And I was going to be like, wow, really? Yeah, I'm, even I'm not that much of a douche. Well, I guess I am, but I, I really, yeah, I, I have no room to be there here. I agree with you. Yeah, you would totally do that. Yeah, exactly. So, yes, Raw request. Um, well, we know that my request from last week so far seems to be fulfilled. In fact, if anything, it got bolstered because, I mean, the authority got showered with gifts and sets really seem to be further solidifying the relationship. So let me think of a new Raw request. Um, you know what? I, I'm, I'm going to say this. Try and have a speedy resolution to the Dolph Ziggler Lana, whole, 
you know, dynamic, because that seems to be featured prominently on Raw, and I just want that storyline to be resolved fairly quickly. Yeah. Uh, you know, I know there are a lot of rumors about Dolph Ziggler's contract situation right now. If you want my opinion on it at this moment, I think he's taking a walk. In fact, I know, Ashton, you said that you don't even really see him. If he does take a walk going to any other promotion, he might do comedy, and that's exactly what I think he's going to do, actually. So. Uh, I, I I think he's done. I think he's going to wash his hands clean in the situation. I could be wrong. Tomorrow we could read that he resigned. No, I, honestly, I think, and then this is going to hit you at home, but I, I think he's going to pull a John Morrison, man. I think he's going to I think he's going to leave the company. He might work some indie shows, but he's going to really spread out. He's going to do comedy. He's going to do acting. Probably going to do some stuff with his, uh, well, I guess it would be his ex now, because I know he used to date Amy Schumer, so he probably has some connections in Hollywood. Right. Some movies and TV shows some comedy, that kind of stuff. And when he realizes that he's not actually any good at all that stuff, he'll come back to wrestling and probably try and work his way back into the WWE, even though he's probably never never going to get there again because of his age. Right. So, yeah, I, I think Dolph Ziggler's time is coming to a close. And, I mean, hell, if he wants to do all that stuff, it's paid dividends for Johnny Mundo. He feels totally reinvigorated. He's in love with Lucha Underground, and I love that he loves Lucha Underground. Oh, yeah, I mean, that's... that's I'm not going to try and do that the old never-say-never thing, but really... Dolph Ziggler is in a really awkward position because he doesn't really have any sort of mentionable character. And right. his in-ring is basically just a, a, a watered-down version of everything that ever gets done on the indies already. Yeah. Like, he's sort of in a really awkward position in that everything that he does, there are already billions of guys on the independent circuit that do what he does better than him. Right. So, like, how does he compete with that other than just, like, name power, I guess? Right. You know, even then, he wouldn't be able to go by Dolph Ziggler. He'd have to be Nick Nemeth. Yeah. It really is a very, I mean, as you said, awkward position for Dolph to be in. I'm just asking somebody to end the pain. Nobody's into this storyline. I don't believe this storyline. I mean, I've seen a lot of great, you know, on-screen couples. I mean, Edge and Lita, Trish and Christian, you know. It can work. This pairing just is not it. Hell, people have made jokes about all the pairings that AJ had in her time, but I felt like she had more chemistry with all of those pairings than Dolph does in this one. And Dolph was the one of those pairings. The irony here did. is that he, I believe she actually met her current husband, CM Punk, through one of those angles. Right. So, you know? Uh, I mean, obviously, the chemistry had to be there. Yeah, just crazy. Um, so, yeah, my raw request have a resolution of the storyline fairly quickly, even if you want it to be an intergender tag match, kind of ease Lana in slowly, as slow as possible. But even that's, I know, taking a risk. So that's my raw request. Ashton, what about you? My raw request, I, man, there is a lot of like different little tiny things that I wish the WWE would do better. The one thing that I really wish they would do better is stop booking their baby faces as idiots. Yeah. Specifically Paige. Right. So that's going to be my role request, is to, you know, smarten your babyface characters up a little bit. Hey, that's short, sweet, and to the point. I'll uh, fix my signature to that in a heartbeat, which only leaves us with one segment left. 32nd Hot Seat. Hard to believe this used to be a SmackDown exclusive, isn't it? I know, right? What do you got for me? Um, again... Since the pay-per-view isn't for another, I believe, two weeks? Two or three weeks. Um, I think it's three weeks. Yeah, uh, I, I can actually ask you a WWE-related question. Because uh, the thing is, like with pay-per-view weeks, I always have to ask you a non-WWE-related question because everything is preview and predictions, preview and predictions. Uh, but uh, for right now, I'm going to keep it relatively simple. Do you think that Cesaro is going to win a singles title by the end of 2015? If the answer to that question is no, do you think he'll win a, a, a title by WrestleMania 32 or at WrestleMania 32? And if the answer to both of those questions is yes, or to either one of those questions is yes, what title do you think it'll be, and when do you think it'll happen? You have 30 seconds, and your time starts now. Okay, I don't think Cesaro's going to win a singles championship for the remainder of 2015, because we've got a really saturated pool right now. Nor do I think he'll win at WrestleMania 32. Okay, so when? 
Um, what's what's the pay per view? I, I'd say Payback 2016. I'll say he wins the Intercontinental Championship. I can dig that. Yeah. That's right. real. Yeah. That was the only about 20, 25 seconds, somewhere around there. Nice. So I, I won't uh, pontificate any more about that. We'll save that discussion for another time. Uh, for now, though, is there anything else you want to say about Raw or WWE or anything in general before it calls out? No, sir. This is going to be another three-parter, I believe. I'm going to break it up into uh, Heat of the Night, Raw Review, and then post-show segments. Sounds great. All right, guys. Well, with that said, this has been Monday Night Raw. This has been Twit Wow, the best wrestling podcast made for wrestling fans, by wrestling fans, on the web today. I'm John. That's my cohort and commentary, Ashton. Guys, be sure to comment and subscribe on YouTube. Again, big talking point for me personally that I'd love to hear your feedback on. How would you handle the Bray Wyatt situation? What did you think of our uh, assertions on both sides? You know, should he talk less? What should we do with this character? What do you think the deficiencies of Bray Wyatt are? Do you think maybe we're over-exaggerating the situation? Uh, what do you think about this newly found credibility in the authority and this newfound confidence in Seth Rollins? Uh, be sure to take the conversation over to Puitoff, an amazing pro wrestling group on Facebook. They do raw threads uh, regularly from week to week, so you know, you'll find a lot of great conversations there. But I understand... If you don't really like, you know, conversing with the crowd, you like to keep it more minimal, maybe you just want to keep it to myself and my core and commentary here, Ashton has got you covered. He has made a TwitWow subreddit. You can start any thread on any wrestling topic that your heart desires. I mean, again, I know one user started a thread for Ashton here. Who do you mundo over? I love that my markouts have become a verb. I've achieved something. It's just so wonderful. Um, so, yeah, you guys, whatever your heart desires, you can talk about it there. And we will see you again for our Lucha underground review where I'm hoping to Mundo over. See, bringing it back. Johnny Mundo getting his hands on Alberto Al Patron. But of course, the one question we always have to ask when it comes to Lucha Underground, what secrets lie behind the doors of that temple? We'll see what we find out this Wednesday. Until then, guys, tune in and peace out. <laughs>